ladies and gentlemen, here we go again. You know I get excited. You know I get excited. I get excited when the sun shines. I do, you know, but 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 now I got something even bigger and better than that. Which about the third annual small business success? I'm sorry, let's try it again. The FSCDC and JP Morgan Chase presents the third annual Small Business Success Summit on July 29th here at Florence Square, 2251 Florence Road, right? From 9 a.m. to about 4 p.m. with an after four networking mix up from 4 to 5 30 p.m. Ask me why I'm excited, I'll tell you. We have literally uh, 18 speakers. 15 workshops. Uh, some of our workshops include things like Nonprofit 101, Streamlining Your Business. We have Coping with the Mental Stress of Owning a Business. We have How to Use Chat GPT. No, we don't need to be afraid of it. Chat GPT to help your business. We have my workshop, What is the Net Worth of Your Business Network? And we have panels, How to Contract With business and banking, women in business. We have, uh, um, oh my goodness, what other way? I'm so excited. We have uh, marketing promotions and sales. These are all panels. And we have uh, doing business with your local chambers of commerce. SBDC is sponsoring the Get Your Question Answered Room. Imagine this. We have a room where you can go and you sit down and you talk to somebody and you ask them questions and they will answer it. And this is sponsored by Small Business Development Center. Very excited about that. And we feed you lunch. Not a bad deal. Now, now I've saved the best for last because as you saw me or heard me speaking about the workshops, I left out, for good reason, the best, the greatest, the most fantastic workshop of all time. It is called From Bootstrapped to Venture Backed, and that's by the great and wonderful Miss Mariah Lichtenstern. How are you doing? I'm so excited to have you sitting right there in your fancy room. (laughs) Well, hello, Erin. I am doing fabulous, uh, especially to be here with you. So thank you for having me. I'm also excited about the event and look forward to just all that's taking place. And I know it's going to inspire and empower so many business leaders that um, I'm really looking forward to it. Yes. Here you are. And that's fantastic. Um, t- tell us a little bit, just, just a teeny bit about who Mariah Lichterstein is, please. Well, I think um, at my heart and uh, according to Myers-Briggs and my college track record, I'm an advocate. So I think uh, a lot of the work that I do is because I um I care about people, I care about our economy, I care about our communities, um, I care about how we how we interact as human beings. I'm an empath, so if I'm in a place where people aren't happy, it's hard for me to be happy, but when th- things are good, I feel good. So I like to surround myself with positive people, I like to um, use my gifts, talents, privileges, and abilities to improve my surroundings and circumstances and, and those are the people around me. So that's kind of who I am as a person. I'm the founding partner of Diversity Ventures. Uh, We are an advisory and investment firm that specializes in startups. So that's why uh, I will be covering the topic of bootstrap to venture backs. See, and and that is such a cool name, bootstrap to venture back. It it sounds to me like you're starting from OG, I wish I had, to, well, look at me now. And, and so, so you're going to sh- show us how to get from point A to point Z. Something like right that. I that? mean, for some people, it's a point A to point Z to go from being bootstrapped or you know having friends and family fund their company to uh, having an uh, institutional investment firm or venture capital firm come in and invest in them. Um, for some people, they don't need it, and they shouldn't take venture capital if they don't need it. You're selling, you know, part of your company. You're now, you know, going to work for someone else, and there's a lot of responsibilities that come with that. But there's some companies that do need that, and for which it makes a lot of sense. So the goal of this uh, workshop is really to explain the difference between bootstrapping, 
um, what angel investing is, how that compares to institutional investment from venture capitalists, um, how they can work together, and looking at what's right for the given founder. Um, and also some consideration into cap table management, which is the capitalization table, which basically shows who owns what in the company, the founders and, and the investors. So um, yeah, for some people it will be A to Z. And for some people, they they may feel like, oh, I, I'll be good with just this. And, and I know that to many of us folk who just don't know any better, when we speak about uh, venture capital, venture cap capitalism, we're thinking that no one's going to talk to, to us unless we're, we're looking at a, a couple of million dollars or more. But that's not necessarily the case, is it? Mm -hmm. and, and I know that to many of us folk who just don't know any better, when we speak about uh, venture, capital, venture cap capitalism, we're thinking that no one's going to talk to, to us unless we're, we're looking at a, a couple of million dollars or more. But that's not necessarily the case, is it? Mm -hmm. and, and I know that to many of us folk who just don't know any better, when we speak about uh, venture capital, venture cap capitalism, we're thinking that no one's going to talk to, to us unless we're, we're looking at at a, a couple of million dollars more. Well, uh, I'm going to keep it real here. So um, it depends on what stage you're in and, uh, you know, what you're trying to accomplish. But what I will say is that when you are bootstrapped or raising from friends and family or from angels, the economics that are expected, the returns that are expected may be different than a venture capitalist. Venture capitalists are investing other people's money venture capitalists are institutional investors that get paid to manage and deploy capital uh, for the purpose of outsized returns and because they are we are uh, um we are building portfolios some of those companies the majority of those companies are going to fail most startups do fail um and we rely on a small number of companies to pay for all of those losses so when an institutional investor, a venture capitalist, they are going to look to see that you have the potential for outsized returns. And that's not one or $2 million. Uh, it's maybe more to the tune of, can you one day sell for a billion dollars? Or, you know, maybe you you won't be that, that outlier that returns a whole fund, but you'll be um, a company somewhere with a portfolio that will return a multiple. Uh, no one wants to bet on a company that they know is going to fail or that they know is only going to, you know, make one or two million dollars of annual re recurring revenue. Uh, and I I'm talking about venture capitalists. No institutional investor really is going to bank on that, right? Um, if, if that's what they know that the, the capacity limits are. And so that's why when you hear about venture capital, um, oftentimes they are focused or, or speak to do you have a scalable company? Do you have a company that can scale this? So typically like a brick and mortar has a limited capacity. However many people can be seated for any period of time, that's what it is. And then over time, you may have so many people in a day, but how can you scale beyond that? Unless you have a franchise, if you have a franchise, some kind of turnkey model, then you may be able to scale to some extent. But if you look at say a piece of software, you know, once that software is developed, it's developed, right? There may be some updates and maintenance that's required, but basically that software now that you're selling it there's there's really not a cost of those goods sold if i am selling a cinnamon roll there's a cost to make that cinnamon roll if i'm selling a software once that that sunk cost is in there you know everything you know past the um and for even point is profit but one thing i will say is like if you're a, if you are a mom and pop shop if you're a brick and mortar if you have um you know maybe a, um you know some kind of consumer packaged good, um, or something like that. I think that can be scalable, but there, there's appropriate investors for those different types of businesses. And that's that's something that we do touch on in that workshop. Um, so just because your company may not be right for venture capital, doesn't mean that it's not right for some other kind of investment or for some other kind of um, funding vehicle, like a loan. And there's, there's different loans now. There's not just, you know, the, the 
loans that have been available to business owners before that um, require, you know, certain kind of collateral or home ownership or what there's a lot of different options emerging in this day and age. There's crowdfunding, there's all kinds of things. So the really the point is to talk about, you know, what kind of funding is appropriate for various companies and at what stages and what to expect yes. and when to approach people. And yeah, we're all learning, but guess what? This brain here has greater capacity than we often give ourselves credit for. You know, it's like um, when it, when you when you look at the Navy SEALs, right? They push themselves to the max, right? And oftentimes we think we have certain, uh, you know, limits and what we can learn or do. And when we push ourselves, we realize, you know, actually there was a lot more in me than I gave myself credit for. So um, yeah, I, I like to make things uh, plain. I like to make things accessible to people who are often left out. And I like to be a bridge between people who have um, privilege and, and people who have valuable, but often underutilized and undervalued perspectives. They, ladies and gentlemen, okay, first, I'm laughing because I love the power of this woman. She's a person out there, and you can tell that she's passionate about what she's talking about. This is come. You folk, if you're interested in, 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 in getting your business to the next level, you got to come to her workshop, Mariah Lichtenstern, from Bootstrap to Venture Back. You, you got to come. I mean, think about this, right? Small business success, third annual, Saturday, July 29th, from 9 to 4 p.m., with a after four mixer. We're gonna have networking games. We're gonna have the Dana Maisha Award. We're gonna be giving that out. We're gonna honor our small business uh, of the year. That will go to uh, the Sacramento Observer with their 60 years of service. We have entertainment by master musician Trinity Sharp, right? Um, we got 15 workshops, 18 speakers, the Get Your Question Answered Room, sponsored by SBTC, and we provide lunch. Now, folks, all this is going to cost you is $25. What? I know. $25. That lunch itself is $25, right? You know? If you want a table, that's $150. We'll give you four uh, tickets to the event, table, tablecloth, the whole bit, right? You get two chairs. Hey! So, so, you come because you know if you don't come, you'll be like, oh, gee, did I miss that? Yeah, you did. And you don't want to. So for $25, you come, you spend some time with myself, the speakers, and of course the great and the wonderful Miss Mariah Lichtenstern, all happening Saturday, July train life. Now, now I think I did a good job of giving them a reason why they should come. But maybe, just maybe, you can give them oh, 30 seconds of, hey guys, you need to be here because. Oh, this Small Business Summit is going to be off the chain. We're going to come together as people who are, are big thinkers. Every business starts as a small business. Every business starts as a small business. And this is a place where you, you can learn, you can grow, you can connect with like-minded people because, you know, entrepreneurs are a rare breed. I mean, we just think different and we need to be around people who understand that and support that. Look, I'm an around the way girl. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not from, uh, I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. You know what I mean? But the reason why I've gotten to where I am now is because of the people that I surrounded myself with. And so I'm excited that I get to be there with you and I look forward to seeing you there. All right then, all right. You've heard it, folks. Um, please come. We're looking forward to having a great and wonderful time. I gotta tell you, last year, last year, the energy was so crazy, they had to close the doors to the workshop room because we were making too much noise in the hallways. That's that's how that's how high the energy was up. So we're not gonna tone that down, people. We're not gonna tone it down. We're just gonna have better doors. See you there. I'll see you there, Miss Mariah. Till then, I bid you peace.